at the end of the Indian Wars in the 1920s, it became law that Native Americans were not allowed to participate in their Native American ceremonies. They became illegal. Continuing to participate in those has made us stronger as people. It has nothing to do with feeling negative about any human, but it is our right and our responsibility to participate in our ceremonies. So we still sing for those salmon. We sing for the acorn. We sing for the acorn flower in the spring to become a ripe fruit, you know, that, that in the fall that we harvest then and we have another acorn dance at that time for the acorn harvest. We have a dance for the deer. We have a dance for the bear. So I participate in all those ceremonies. And sometimes ceremony in and of itself is not this big ritual, but small ritual, say each morning saying hello to the sun. And just that moment of intent, you're taking the time out to say, today's gonna be a good day. I'm, having, I'm being here with sun, it's coming up. And also, um, when you're gathering your basket sticks, when you're harvesting those sticks, when you're taking that life and you're saying, thank you, thank you, because now I'm going to be creating something else with your body, that body that is that piece of wood that is exactly like yourself. Your hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, calcium, that's the same thing that's in that stick, that then you're gonna be making something that you can utilize utilitarian or for beauty or for building materials materials for your regalia that you're wearing and so all of those little things even are part of our culture that needs to be maintained. When you have that you know those those factors in like historic you know um, suppression that's there from the Spanish you know um, our religion being belittled, often mocked during the Mexican period, um, you know, our uh, religion criminalized in the American period, um, and of course the fact that if people were, were actively practicing a lot of traditional ways during the gold rush and everything, like um, because of that, that law that was passed, people could, could legally be killed, you know, if they were actively practicing things outside of, outside of like a really private space. Um, you know, those factors, they all, I'm sure, led to, to what outsiders wanted, which was our traditional religions to go away. And so, again, though, they didn't. That's the, ma like the magical and powerful part, you know, and, and they didn't for that very you know, specific reason that they were meant to continue, you know. They, they're continued because they're, they're meant to be here, you know, and, and that's why we have to still practice them. Oral history, it's, um, it's important because that, that carries on our traditions. We wouldn't know what we do without oral history. We wouldn't have, um, we wouldn't have our, our, our language spoken today without an oral, you know, oral history. We wouldn't have our stories passed down without oral history. And oral history, even if oral history led to, to, um, to those records and those archives that we have in the 1920s, that, that couldn't have happened without oral history. Um, the oral tradition allowed you know, all those things to keep going. And even in our families to this day, um, it's still passed down. You know? What can be remembered of things are still carried on. And that, that's you know, incredible to think about how, how things have been passed down you know, from the word of mouth, from you know, the very beginning of time, you know, from creation. There was uh, uh, an elder in my community. Um, he's still living. He's 90, 90 something years old, um, Hank Alvarez, and he he's a relative of mine. He was recollecting on things, and he started to talk about the creation story in our in our community, about um, the great flood, um, which was over at at Tushtak, at Mount Diablo, and he was talking about this um, little bits of it. But that knowledge was passed down from his mother passed down from her mother, and she was born in the Rancheria, which goes all the way back from before the missions to ancient times. 
And that's a 90-year-old man, you know, just in 2017 talking. You know, so that shows how important that those traditions are and how alive they are at the same time.